With Apex having a ton of new players recently, it feels like a perfect time to take a dive into the best tips for newer players. If you're joining us here in Season 10, then welcome. And this entire video is going to be jam-packed full of awesome tips that will help you get your Apex grind off to a good start. My name is Valued, and we have a lot to cover today, so let's get right into it. One of the biggest struggles as a new player is finding out which legend to play. While you should try them all, playing one that fits your playstyle is the key to success early on. Are you normally a run and gun player? Then we'd recommend playing something aggressive like Bangalore or Octane. Do you like supporting your team, and you play more of a safe reserve style? Then we'd recommend trying out Gibraltar or Lifeline. It's key to match your game mentality with your legend pick, as it will make the game feel much more natural and you'll have an easier time starting out. Alright guys, speaking of choosing your legend, if you find someone you like early on, but find yourself struggling with them, don't be afraid to mix it up and try another legend. Your goal is to get as comfortable with the game as possible, and you want to be enjoying yourself while doing it, so mixing up your legend picks will help you in both of those regards. Before ever dropping into a match, you should always know what your legend does. Reading every legend's abilities and at least having an idea of what they all do is a great way to make sure you don't get caught off in a match. And this goes for Legends passives as well. Most Legends passives are very strong, and just because it's not an activated ability doesn't mean it can't be game changing. Just take a look at Seer. A great tool for learning all of the Legends is the firing range. Hopping into this practice playground and using each ability will help you get a grasp on the effects, animation, and timing required for every skill. And while you're in there, don't forget to get your hands on every weapon as well. Each weapon has a unique feel and will require some reps to get comfortable on. While playing matches helps a lot with this, it's important to get some of these core mechanics of the game down before hopping into any match. It'll make your games go so much more smoother when you have reps on every single gun that you can pick up. And a big reason why these reps are important is that every weapon in the game has its own unique fire rate, handling, and most importantly, recoil pattern. Knowing the recoil pattern of your automatic weapons is vital to landing consistent damage when you have open shots. You aren't going to have a high level stabilizer to help you recoil every single game, so getting used to managing the recoil on your own is going to be a huge skill to master. While the firing range is a great tool for learning the fundamentals of the game, we recommend using it every single time you log on to Apex. The top players in the game always use some method of warming up before hopping into matches, and the firing range is great for all players, regardless if you're a veteran or you just installed the game today. If you hop into the firing range for 5-10 to 10 minutes before you play a game, you'll skip your warm up game altogether and have an ultimately better experience. Alright guys, for beginners, you don't have to be a movement guru to do super well in Apex, but the slide jump really is a must-have maneuver for all players. But don't worry guys, it's super simple. Just sprint for a couple seconds, letting your character get to full speed, then slide and jump towards the end of the slide animation. This is a bit faster with your guns put away and is at the core of a lot of Apex's movement. This one might be obvious guys, but there is no fall damage in Apex. However, you will get a large stagger animation on every legend except for Horizon, so keep this in mind when you're dropping large distances on some enemies. Running with your fists out is a decent speed increase, just make sure you don't get caught rounding the corner into an enemy team without your gun at the ready. This extra movement speed is great when rotating or running away from danger. So guys, don't forget to stash those weapons whenever it makes sense to do so. Zip lines are a great way to maneuver the map, and you'll find them going across gaps, climbing tall buildings, or heading to the top of a jump tower. Adding a bit of movement while you use these is a great idea, because you can easily get beamed if you travel in a perfect straight line. Spinning your way up a vertical zip line or hopping on and off a horizontal one are the easiest ways to implement some movement into using zip lines. And while we're talking about zip lines, they can be used to give yourself a bit of a speed boost. All you gotta do is grab the zipline and immediately jump. This will give you a much bigger jump in the direction you were headed. And this can be great when used in buildings, giving you just a little bit more movement. This does take some time to get used to, but once you get it down, it opens up a lot of options for you. Next up, we're gonna talk about Evo Shields. Your shield rarity dictates how much health your shield has. Each segment represents 25 HP, with the max being a red evo with 125 HP. While you can find some higher levels of evo shields, they can also evolve after you deal a certain amount of damage. And that damage shows on your UI just above your shield's health. 
With you being unable to find red evos on the ground, it's important to deal damage throughout a match if you want to have a max level evo shield for the later stages of the game. Alright guys, let's talk about looting a bit. Learning to loot fast is one of the biggest learning curves for any new player. There's a ton of loot in Apex, and between all the guns, the attachments, heals, nades, and other items, it can be a bit overwhelming. So it'll take you some time to familiarize yourself with everything, and that's okay. What's important to realize is you don't have to be perfectly looted every single game. While it's great to have the perfect loadout, you're rarely going to find that off the drop. So practice looting areas quickly rather than perfectly. The bigger learning curve in the game is looting fast, not looting flawlessly. One thing a lot of new players do is they get lost in the loot. So keep your head up and focus on the closing ring, and the rest of the game will help you find a lot more success than hunting for that perfect loadout every single time. Alright guys, this being said, as you go throughout the game, you'll manage to find some pretty strong loot. The general rule of thumb when building your loadout is this. You want one primary weapon, usually a strong automatic gun with good medium range gunfight power, and secondary weapons are usually a strong close range option like an SMG or a shoddy. Or you can go with a sniper as a more niche long range option. And guys, if you're having trouble deciding what weapons are good to use, here's a few that we would recommend. For assault rifles, the R301 is hands down the easiest to use with good fire rate and accuracy. And if you want something that packs a bit more damage and is better close range, then we'd recommend trying out the flatline. Just make sure to practice with its odd recoil pattern. A great SMG to give a try is the Volt, as it's the most accurate in its class and has solid damage. And for shotties, we'd recommend trying out the EVA 8. But if shotguns aren't your style, then go for the charge rifle as a sniper option, as it's definitely the easiest sniper to use and arguably one of the strongest. If you want an in-depth look at all the strength of every weapon here in Season 10, then make sure to check out our weapon tier list. The link will be in the description below. Alright guys, bonus tip. If you're having a tough time learning the legends, the weapons, or just winning games, we have a ton of other content on the channel to help you get your bearings. But if you're looking to improve fast and really level up your game, then make sure to head over to ProGuys.com and check out some of the best coaches in the world. There are a ton of top tier coaches and programs waiting to help you level up your game. This will also be linked in the description below. Alright guys, on to our next tip. When you're looting, you're going to want to leave ample space for heals at every stage of the game. Shield batteries and shield cells will be the best method for restoring your armor when taking damage. While batteries feel really nice to use, they can take a lot longer than a cell, so carrying extra cells to pop quickly during fights is a great idea. You don't want to get caught popping a 5 second battery every single time, especially when you're getting pushed. Syringes and medkits will help take care of your HP bar, and with this value being protected by your shield, you don't have to carry a lot of these. This being said, carrying a stack of either syringes or medkits is a great idea to ensure you can always fully heal yourself if you need. On top of that, these are the only heals outside of a Phoenix kit that can heal the damage dealt to you by the zone. Alright guys, and speaking of Phoenix kits, one recommendation we have is not carrying too many of these around. In the early stages of a game, when you have less shield, they're really not that great. With their long activation time, they can be tough to get off unless you use them to heal yourself after finishing a fight. And they take up a whole inventory slot, which can be tough to accommodate for with a low level backpack. On to the nades. Arc stars, thermites, and frag nades are all powerful tools, and you should be making room for at least one or two of these throughout a game. Arc stars stick to surfaces, and they're great at cracking shield and slowing enemies down. Frags deal solid damage and are really flexible around buildings and doors. And thermites create a line of fire that's great at zoning enemies, finishing off downed enemies, and destroying doors. Not to mention, thermites charge up the new Rampage LMG. So guys, after you have ample ammo and heals, making room for one or two nades and learning how to use them will help you level up your game a ton. You can also find gold variations for your helmet, armor, and backpack, each having a special perk. The helmet gives faster recharge on your abilities. The armor makes syringes and shield cells heal for double while being 25 HP less than a red evo. And the backpack gives your teammates you revive extra HP and shield when they get picked up. You can also find fully kitted gold weapons. These are rare, but have a maximum level attachment in every slot they have available. The current rotation of gold weapons in Season 10 is the Peacekeeper, RE45, Flatline, Rampage, and the Charge Rifle. Alright guys, now we're going to talk about some more fighting tips. In Apex, you always need to be ready to fight. If a squad sees or hears you, 
they can often close the distance very quickly with all the mobility in the game. So be sure to always be paying close attention to what's around you and be listening for any audio cues nearby. And when you're in fights, be sure to add in as much movement as you can, as it will help to make your targets miss some shots. The most basic way of doing this is to strafe back and forth, changing your movement direction while laying down some shots. Keep in mind your strafe speed is much slower when you're ADSing, especially with the larger weapons in the game, like the Rampage. And due to that lowered movement speed when aiming down sights, at really close range, it's always a good idea to hip fire. Most weapons in this game have great hip fire accuracy compared to other shooters, and doing this allows you to strafe much quicker than if you were ADSing with your sight. This also makes it a lot easier to throw in some crouches to your movement, and combined with your extra speed, will make you very hard to hit. A couple basic settings you should change is to swap crouch over to hold, and make it so damage doesn't pull you out of a death box. The crouch input change will make all the movement in the game much smoother, and the death box setting is great for armor swapping. And speaking of armor swapping, if you can quickly grab armor out of a death box off someone you just finished, it will always be at the maximum health value. When getting third partied or even just trying to close out a fight, this can be a lifesaver as it's the quickest way to get out a burst of healing once you get it down. Having the setting set up so the damage doesn't pull you out of the death box will make this swap much easier. Just don't get stuck looting the box while you get down. Doors and Apex are super dynamic, and getting good at playing around them will help you win a lot of your fights. You can block a door by standing on one side of it, and you can close the door on yourself, allowing you to barely keep it open and use it as cover. Doors can also be destroyed with two melees, grenades, and a charged up rampage. So don't get too comfortable sitting behind one if your enemies have this. Likewise, if you see someone abusing a door, use one of these methods to break into their safe place. Many legends in the game have low cooldown tactical abilities that are very useful, even when not in a fight. A great example is Bloodhound, whose scans should be used frequently as it has a low cooldown and it is great at ensuring your squad doesn't get surprised by an enemy. Don't be afraid to use these lower cooldown abilities, as far too often new players hold their abilities for that perfect moment and miss out on a lot of the benefits of the legend that they're playing. On the flip side of this, many legends ultimates have long cooldowns, punishing you for using them poorly. Abilities like Horizon's Black Hole can be incredibly strong if timed and used well, but have a long cooldown. Be sure to get good use of these abilities and don't just throw them out willy-nilly. Make sure you guys try each point of interest and mix up your drop locations. This will help you get to know the map much better and will help you carve out which areas you really like and which ones you don't like so much. Getting a feel for which areas are popular and finding out which ones are more niche is key to having consistent games. When dropping, you should look to find areas that aren't directly under the flight path of the dropship, also not at the beginning or end of its route. Dropping to central locations like Fragment East and West every game might be fun for a couple rounds, but very often you'll die pretty early and not get the chance to play out the rest of the game. Getting a safe drop will let you have much less of a hectic start, allowing you to get your bearings and have a much more productive game. Apex has one of the most robust pinging systems on the market, so use it to your advantage. Pinging items, enemy locations, and rotations will help keep your team on the same page without having to say a single word. Getting comfortable with all the options that this system has to offer will help you communicate quickly and effectively, without even having to be in voice chat. The ring and apex will close at random, but there is some method to the madness. The ring contracts, always shrinking within its current boundaries. With this in mind, it's a great idea to always rotate where the ring is closest to the storm. If you can get to these narrow areas, not only does the zone close in slower, but you can use the zone as protection. If you have a lethal zone at your back, there's a good chance no one's going to be coming from that direction. Having this mindset throughout the game while you're deciding where to move will help you have less hectic mid-game fights and also have more shots at getting a win. Alright guys, this next tip is an important one. It can be enticing to shoot at every person you see, but if they're far away or you're just in a bad spot to take a fight, it's often wise to sometimes avoid fights. Positioning is very important, and all too often players just throw their lives away because they start throwing down shots at an enemy and get third partied or just lose a 1v1 fight. So prioritize playing for the ring and the fights will come to you. Survey beacons allow your squad to see the next zone. It could be a great way to get an early rotation. 
and put yourself in a winning position later in the game. As you're rotating throughout the game, if you have a chance to hit one of these things, do it. The extra info could be the difference between rotating late and dying, or having a power position before other squads can get there. If you can manage to get your teammates tags after they die, you can reboot them at respawn beacons. It's important to work together in Apex, and oftentimes you or your teammates will die to help win a fight. If possible, try to get those respawns, and hopefully they'll do the same for you. Alright guys, this tip goes out to all the new players out there. It'll be enticing when you get into the game to just hop into ranked right away at level 10, but you should really stick to pubs for a while. There's a ton to learn in this game, and ranked is a bad place to do it. Having the extra stress of a rating while trying to learn the basics will do nothing but slow your progress. So we recommend not playing ranked until you have a firm grasp of the legends, the weapons, and the map on the current ranked rotation. And for our final tip guys, on the flip side, if you're looking to mix it up from the traditional BR, Apex Legends new arena mode is a great way to do this. While there are some key differences in how the match operates, it's a great way to get a feel for the weapons and get a lot of practice winning gunfights. And at the worst, it's a great way to warm up before hopping into a BR match. And that makes 40. Let us know in the comments below which tip you found the most helpful. And if you have any tips we didn't get to today, let us know down there as well. There's a ton more to know about Apex, but hopefully this list gets you guys off to a great start. Anyway, guys, my name's been Valued. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to sub to the channel. We have so much great content coming your way in season 10 and for every season to come. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.